The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the days for Jesus to be taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there. But they would not welcome him, because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. The Gospel of the Lord. It's so wonderful to have uh, people like uh, the Sons of Thunder in one uh, team, you know, James and uh, John. Those guys want thunder right there to respond because they of course know that uh, Jesus Christ is capable of doing that. But the point is, every moment when there is the persecution, there's a deflection, a movement on another path. And that path is still part and parcel of God's will, is the chain of the missionary activity. So Christ is resolute ahead to Jerusalem to embrace his passion. And between the, between the Jews and the Samaritans, they don't go to the same place. So that's why you have what they call the Israelite journey to bypass the Samaritan town. But Jesus did not take that path. He followed the Samaritan village and you, you know, you guys shouldn't be here. And for the disciples, James and John, they thought this was the opportunity to strike. And you know, sometimes we kind of want to strike. We want to strike our adversaries. We want to strike the one who doesn't love us, who doesn't like us. The one who contends with us and argues and asks questions. Sometimes the questions we think are irrelevant questions or questions meant to incite or a sign that they do not agree with what we're saying because they're becoming argumentative. But those are part and parcel of God's design. And if you want to experience truly what Christ experienced on the cross during the time of his sacred passion, he looked intently on those he loved and they were the ones crucifying him. He looked intently on those he came to die for, those he came to bring life for, and they're the ones who misjudged him. He looked intently, resolutely in love to follow God's will, and yet humanity continues to stab him and nail him. What was going on in his heart, in his mind? You are not alone, dear friends. If in any reason, or for any reason, your faith life disturbs the crowd, if your belief disturbs those who are even closest to you, you have a leader. It is because you have something going for you, sometimes your life may actually be calling out those who do not live right. And you are not even calling them out, but your life does. 
Today, Prophet Zechariah says the time will come when people will actually look at you and say, we know God is with you. And they hold and grasp up to you. Like Jacob held on to God and said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I will not let you go unless you bless me. It is not time yet for that. Sometimes, some people do. When they see God's life in you, they kind of embrace you. Some others, when they see you coming one mile away, they turn around and go the other direction. They don't want to come in because light and darkness do not mix. Water and oil do not mix. But those who are intent on following God will see that light and want it. I want what you have. I need what you have. And they hold on. Why not live for that moment? Why not live consciously every day knowing that that light may not shine for everybody, but there's someone somewhere who wants to hold on to you because he knows God is with you. Let us rise and pray. Dearly beloved friends, brothers and sisters, let us pray for our Holy Father, to whom has been entrusted the seat in the chair the key of Peter's of Peter. Pray that the Holy Father may continue to be fortified during this day of the church's morning and trials. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Pray for our bishops, bishops all over the world, bishop here in America, a bishop from Zincola, our own bishop, praying that the good Lord will continue to strengthen his ministry. To fortify him, grant him the defense that comes from on high. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. Pray for all our priests, deacons, consecrated men and women. Pray for our pastor. Pray for our priest young. Pray for all priests, particularly those who are ill, those who are spiritually ill, or physically ill, those who are afraid, those who are overcoming the burdens of the world on their heart and feel that they are not making any waves anymore or nothing is happening to their mission or their static, stationary, praying that they rely completely, abandon themselves to the heart of Jesus through whom fruitfulness, through whom union and joy continues to flow. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord pray for you, our dearly beloved brothers and sisters, Rise up in the morning like the deer that yearns for your running streams to fill yourself with the fountain of life before setting out into this world. The world that is filled with darkness, the world that is filled with chaos and confusion, that the good Lord Himself, through His Holy Spirit, may illuminate the darkness of our lives. Through the Holy Spirit, give us help, help from on high to overcome the challenges of our day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for Dorothy and Joy Pierce, for whom we celebrate this Mass this morning. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Father in heaven, give us the assurance of your presence because you are a living present. You are not God of the past, but God of the present. Live in our present today. Give us the grace of moving consciously going forward, believing and trusting in your love and protection for us. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord.